Access of Maryland program, which is located within the Maryland Department of Disabilities. We are a state agency. Uh, we are non-for-profit um, and we are not selling anything. Um, we, we provide assistive services and equipment for Marylanders who have difficulty using a telephone. Some of you may be familiar with a device called a TTY. Um, and that device would be used for someone who is deaf uh, or who maybe has difficulty speaking. Um, and what they would do is they would type their message into the device. It would go to an operator. The operator would read back that information to the person who is not using a TTY. That person would voice their response. The operator would type that response into a device and it would come up as text on the deaf individual's device. Uh, the operator involved is a Maryland relay operator. So we offer a number of different calling options uh, and services through Maryland Relay. The Maryland Accessible Telecommunications Program provides equipment for those that qualify uh, at no cost. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that later. I know everyone's really interested in, in finding out what kinds of gadgets we have, and we have plenty. We are gonna talk a little bit tonight about caption telephone. Um, this is a relevant and important piece of equipment for individuals who are hard of hearing that are struggling to understand what is being said on the phone. You see there on your screen, uh, an example of a caption telephone. You'll see that it has a large screen with words on it. And we're gonna talk, to, talk a little bit more about that screen and how amazing it is in a little bit. Um, so caption telephone, the, it, what you're seeing there in the words is captions of exactly what the other person is saying as they're saying it. So you're able to listen and the phone will amplify the conversation if needed uh, and read the captions at the same time. Uh, many people who use this device don't necessarily need the captions the whole time, but if they miss something, all they'd have to do is look down on the screen and there it is. So who might use a caption telephone? Uh, individuals who can speak, um, and but they have difficulty hearing what's being said. Um, individuals who are hard of hearing, uh, individuals who are living with presbycusis or age-related hearing loss, uh, veterans with service-related hearing loss. And that is one of the major injuries that uh, individuals who are serving in our military are experiencing is, is service-related or noise-induced hearing loss and individuals who are using hearing aids or cochlear implants, these devices are compatible with those devices. So there's a number of benefits uh, to using a telephone like this. Um, obviously, you'll be able to understand much better what is said on every call, uh, particularly since you'll be able to read and listen with amplification. Oftentimes, as I'm sure you're aware, if a device is too difficult to use, it doesn't get used. Uh, individuals who, have, who struggle to use a telephone oftentimes don't use the phone or they ask someone to help them use the telephone. They may ask a son or daughter or a friend or a grandchild to help them make telephone calls. Uh, and that really relies a lot on family members and it kind of takes away from their independence. So using a device like this really does give an individual greater independence. And the best part of all, the service is free. There is no charge for the captioning at any time. So some of the features uh, that this device has is that it has an extra large display screen and it is customizable. So if for some reason you need the font to be a bit bigger, you can do that. If you need the captions to come across a little bit slower, you can do that too. You can also uh, set the, the device's display in higher contrast if needed. You can change the color of the background and of the font at any time. Uh, like I said before, the, this device also has amplification, so it gets much louder than a standard telephone. Um, you can set and save your volume at any time, and, and that will maintain on the telephone. It also has conversation memory. We've all been there. We've made a phone call to our doctor's office, made the appointment, hung up the phone, and 10 minutes later, what time did I make that appointment for? I can't remember. You can go back to the conversation and look and see what time you made that appointment for. Uh, this device also has a signal meter, which is interesting. Many people are not aware of what that is. 
Uh, for those of you who know someone or maybe perhaps have a hearing loss yourself, uh, understand that sometimes when there is a hearing loss, it's hard to hear yourself too. Uh, and many times someone with a hearing loss will up the volume of their voice uh, because they can't hear their own voice. A signal meter is uh, a little bit of a flash on the screen that lets you know that your voice has reached a certain level. Uh, and so that will signal to you to maybe tone it down a little bit. Uh, it does have redial. It has a built-in answering machine, which is fantastic because not only does it have the answering machine within the device, it will caption those voicemails too. And we've all been there. You've gotten a voicemail, you're listening to it, you're looking for a pen, you're trying to write down what's being said. And by the time you find that pen, the message is over and you really didn't understand what they were saying anyway. And perhaps they were speaking too fast or there was an accent of some kind the answer machine will caption those voicemail messages so you don't have to write anything down and you can read exactly what they're saying as they're saying it. Uh, it of course has speed dial, phone book and caller ID. Uh, and my favorite feature of this device is a one touch button for customer service. You won't have to hang on to your manuals anymore unless you want to. Uh, you don't have to remember what 800 number it is to call for customer service. Um, you know it happens sometimes you have a thunderstorm or you lose power and all of a sudden your device just goes blank and when it comes back all of your settings are lost and you don't remember how to get them back. All you would have to do is touch that one button and it goes directly to customer service and they can help you uh, fix that, that problem of not knowing what your settings are. So I would love to say that magic is what powers this device because we could all use a little magic in our lives these days, uh, but it's not. It's actually a really interesting process. Uh, you'll see on the graphic uh, right there that you talk to the standard telephone user if you're using the caption telephone and that individual speaks back for you to hear. The standard telephone user's voice is also transmitted to a caption telephone operator who is listening to every word that's being said and revoices what's being said into voice recognition software that generates the captions for you to read on the display of the caption telephone. We'll play it one more time for you. <laughs> Okay, and now it's not letting me move forward. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Okay, so um, one thing that I do want to touch on with the caption telephone operators, uh, they operate under FCC, which is the Federal Communication Commission, and state regulations. At no time do they participate in the call. Uh, many people who are using a caption telephone don't even realize that they're there. Uh, and many times people who are speaking to someone on a caption telephone don't even realize that the person's using one. Uh, so the operators never participate. Uh, and they keep everything confidential. So you can feel free to talk to your doctor's office, talk to your financial institutions, um, have that argument with your kids on the phone. Um, the operator is gonna keep that information um, completely confidential. So how would one get a caption telephone? Uh, these devices are provided by the state through the MAT program, which is the Maryland Accessible Telecommunications Program uh, to those who qualify and complete a free assessment. You can also purchase this device yourself at, um, for about $75. We do also have internet-based caption telephone. You'll see there on your screen a much larger uh, telephone and that requires high-speed internet and a telephone line. Uh, you could use it with Wi-Fi as well. Um, and it just ends up being a little bit faster. We also provide caption telephone on web and mobile devices. So your smartphones, your tablets, and your computers or your laptops 
uh, also have capabilities to use caption telephone. So for example, if you're using a cell phone and you need things captioned, it would be really difficult to read captions when you're speaking on the phone. However, if you have a tablet or a laptop, you can simply load up the software on your device and read the captions as they're coming across the screen. I wanna to touch upon another uh, service that we're providing. This is brand new. Uh, this is Remote Conference Captioning or RCC. Uh, this allows individuals who have a hearing loss to participate during conference calls and even Zoom meetings. I know that there have been a lot of complaints within the hard of hearing community and the deaf community that Zoom just doesn't really provide much in the way of captioning. Many of the other platforms don't either. Uh, and if they do, it's not reliable. Uh, how RCC works would be the user receives a link to view captions, so you would open a second screen or split screen. Uh, the operator would connect to the call through a conference call bridge or another similar method. So, for example, for this webinar, the captioner would call in on the Zoom line and would be listening to everything that, that I'm saying, and it would show up as captions uh, on your device. Uh, when the call is completed, the RCC user can print the conference call uh, transcript for further review. So you can have everything written down right there for your reference later on. In, uh, in order to set up remote conference captioning, you would want to visit our website, which is www.mdrelay.org, uh, select the remote conference captioning tab, and it'll direct you to a page where you fill in your information, fill in the information about the conference call or the Zoom meeting or other platform, and they will set up uh, an, a captioner for you uh, to be present during the presentation to be able to put those captions down for you. This is a free service too, I might add. And now the part everybody wants to talk about, the Maryland Accessible Telecommunications Poor Mat Program. Uh, as you can see on your screen there, we have a number of devices and that's just a fraction of what we can offer uh, to clients of the MAT program. Who would benefit from the MAT program? So pretty much anyone that has difficulty using a telephone, but some of them are mentioned here, uh, individuals who are deaf or late deafened. Uh, in other words, an individual who grew up hearing uh, and uses their voice, but doesn't hear now. Anyone who is hard of hearing, so someone who may hear a little bit, uh, but really needs some amplification. Individuals with low vision or who are blind. Individuals who are deaf blind. Uh, individuals who have difficulty speaking. So that may be someone who has, uh, uh, has experienced a stroke or someone who has uh, difficulty with certain sounds. Individuals with limited mobility, so maybe someone who has difficulty grasping a telephone or even dialing. And individuals with cognitive difficulty, and that includes individuals who maybe have memory loss or folks who uh, maybe are living with autism or mental retardation. So what types of equipment are available uh, through this program? We have amplified telephones, which typically are much louder than a standard telephone. And we have a number of different devices that offer varying degrees of amplification. Uh, oftentimes when someone has a hearing loss, they'll turn their standard telephone's volume all the way up, which is great because that works for a little while, but eventually it stops working. It starts getting all crackly and you hear a lot of feedback or maybe static because those phones aren't meant to be that loud that long. So amplified phones can address that. We do provide hands-free phones for individuals who may have difficulty dialing or individuals who have trouble with vision and they, they need to be able to um, dial with their voices. We have large button phones, which uh, helps for folks who have low vision or who are blind, individuals who maybe have difficulty dialing a telephone. Those little buttons are sometimes really hard to pinpoint, so the large button phones can help. We have a device called a picture phone, which it replaces the numbers on the, the buttons with photographs of people you dial consistently. You would program your phone number in, slip a photo of yourself on that button, and that person, all they have to do is touch your face and it dials. Uh, obviously, captioned telephones, which we talked about at length. 
Uh, we also are providing mobile devices these days and emergency dialers. Uh, and we have so much more. We have accessories like phone, phone ringers, like they vibrate under your bed. You put the device between the mattress and the box spring and when the phone rings, it vibrates your bed. Um, individuals who maybe are watching television and don't hear the phone ring will have a flasher that'll go off to let them know that the phone is ringing. The big question of the evening, who qualifies? Uh, so residents of Maryland are, are, are qualified uh, if they are at least three years of age. And people tend to laugh at that. Um, but if you have children or grandchildren, uh, nieces or nephews, you know how much children love to use the telephone. And if it's difficult, to, if it's difficult for them to use the phone, uh, we wanna be there to help them make those telephone calls. Uh, individuals on a limited income, Persons receiving Social Security, SSI, SSDI, or veterans benefits. Uh, individuals who are certified as having difficulty using a standard telephone. And a person who has phone service if the equipment requires it. So if you're looking at something like a device like a tablet uh, to assist with making phone calls, you wouldn't necessarily have to have a phone line, but you may need to have Wi-Fi. So in order to apply for the program, we have applications that are available on our website. I can also email those to you or we can have the office send them to you directly. Uh, we would need that application, um, at the proof of residence, so a telephone bill, internet or utility bill, uh, state issued identification, so a Maryland ID or driver's license, uh, and a verification of income. So once uh, an individual is approved for the program, uh, they are invited to attend a free evaluation with one of our evaluators. Uh, we also provide free evaluations for individuals who are interested in self-purchasing. They don't necessarily want the equipment through our program, uh, but really need guidance on what kind of equipment is gonna work best for them. So during your evaluation, you'll work with one of our evaluators to determine not just what your needs are, but also what your preferences are. Uh, if you're anything like me, technology is just one of those things that gets in the way of, of life, uh, and I prefer less is more to me. Um, I don't need my phone to tell me the weather or what my bank account balance is. Uh, it does anyway, but uh, I don't need for it to happen. So if that's a preference of yours, uh, we can absolutely accommodate that. Uh, there are other folks who really like the tech. They like the touch screens. They like the speed, uh, and we can accommodate that as well. Uh, the evaluator will work with you to select a phone by allowing you to make phone calls, make test phone calls from the equipment that we have in our evaluation center. That way you can see what the device does, how it addresses your needs, and you can pick the device that's going to work best for you. Uh, and then the evaluator will place the order once you've selected your device and the device will be sent directly to you. And don't forget, like I said, if someone does not want to get the equipment through our program, but they need guidance, we are happy to assist. So we have a number of program evaluation sites uh, in and around uh, the state. Um, well, in, in the state, in and around Baltimore as well. Um, we have a, a site in Hagerstown, which I think might be a little it might be closer to you than Towson, um, but we also have um, Eastern Shore, Southern Maryland, and Western Maryland. So free training and setup of your new equipment is available upon request. Uh, these days we are doing things more virtually, so we would probably work with you in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtual meeting uh, to help you get that equipment set up. However, we are doing home visits. Uh, if absolutely necessary, we will don our PPE and come out to help you out. All the warranty information and customer service information is provided to each customer. And one of the best parts about this program is that we are friends for life. If for some reason your needs change, for example, you have a, a a slight hearing loss when you sign up for the program, you have a device that's working for you and everything's great. A couple of years later though, your hearing loss is getting a little bit worse and your device isn't working for you anymore. All you would need to do is contact us. We're happy to 
do a reevaluation, see what's up, see what's new that's out there. Because as you know, technology changes every day. We have new things coming in all the time. And we may have a device that'll work better for you. So we would just swap the equipment for the new device. And that never changes. So as long as you're a part of our program, we will make sure that we connect with you every now and then to see how things are going. And if it's not going as well as it had been before, we can make that change. So that is the end of my uh, presentation. I do want to, uh, to touch on a couple of things right now um, that's not part of my PowerPoint, but because of the, the way things are today, uh, I feel like it, it's important to mention. Um, now more than ever, it's so important for people to be able to connect with others. Um, as Christina said at the beginning of, of this webinar, uh, Zoom and other technologies can be difficult for senior citizens and it can be very intimidating. Uh, they rely very heavily on telephones. Uh, and if they can't use the telephone, that's their main line to get to, fa fa to family and friends, uh, doctor's offices, financial institutions, emergency services. Uh, imagine how difficult it can be to call 911 and you can't hear what the operator is, is saying. Um, it's, and even robocalls and scam calls. Uh, if you don't understand what the person is trying to sell you on the other end of the, the line, or even that they're trying to sell you something, you may end up with a year's worth of turtle wax that you didn't want because you didn't understand what they were saying and you just kind of responded, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you've set up, signed yourself up for something you didn't necessarily want to. So every single call, it's so important for individuals to be able to understand what's being said and to make those connections. Um, social isolation is such a problem these days, and we want to make sure that every single person in Maryland has the opportunity to make those calls that they need to connect with everyone they want to connect with. Uh, my contact information is there. Obviously, I am working from home. Ordinarily, my office is at the State Center in Baltimore, uh, but we were sent home in March, and I've been here ever since. So I've included my cell phone uh, in this information so that you have a direct line to me if you have questions. And that is also my email address. There is another outreach coordinator as well, Tarita Turner, and she talks more about the traditional relay services like speech to speech uh, and uh, TTY services and um, voice carryover services. Her contact information is there as well. And you can keep in touch with us uh, by visiting our website, www.mdrelay.org. You can visit us on Facebook and on Twitter, uh, and you can find out when we are having more webinars. I give webinars every two weeks, and they're statewide. So if you know somebody that needs to know this information, hit me up, let me know, uh, and I will send them an invite to our next webinar. So at this point, I would like to open the floor to questions. Jenny, thank you. That was fantastic. And I am quite sure that we all know people who could benefit from this. So uh, great information to share. So Jenny, our first question is, uh, how long does this process take from when someone calls you? When can they have equipment in their hands? That's a great question. Um, right now, um, obviously, it's a little more difficult to be operating in this world that we are in today. Um, the best thing to do uh, to speed the process would be to fill out the application on our website and send it electronically or via email. That's going to go directly to our evaluation site, to the MAT program, and they can address things right then and there. We are actively doing evaluations. Uh, usually, it takes about a week to two weeks to have something scheduled. And then once that equipment order is placed, it's taking about four to six weeks for the equipment to arrive. However, with the postal service operating <laughs> <laughs> the way it is these days, uh, it, there can be a delay. So I encourage people to, to get on those uh, applications and get them in as soon as possible, because the faster we get those, the faster we can serve you. Jenny, can you talk a little bit about like, does Medicare cover this? Uh, how does it, much does it cost? Is there income limits? Can you talk about that? That's a great question. So um, often when somebody asks me a question like that and they're not sure if they're gonna qualify, I say apply anyway, because nine times out of 10, if you're struggling to use a phone, you'll, you'll probably qualify for the program. Uh, it is not insurance-based. Uh, we don't take a look at insurance at all. So uh, we're really just looking at need. Um, and so there is 
really no income limit either. Like I said, um, it really depends. It's a case by case basis. Obviously, if someone can afford to purchase uh, one of these phones on their own, we would prefer that they do that as we are a nonprofit. Um, however, if there's a real need, uh, we will definitely step up and make sure that you get the equipment that you need. Um, but once again, it's not insurance based. Um, there's and there's no charge, nothing for the telephones, uh, for the services that we provide. So any speech to speech services, the caption telephone services, there's never a charge for that. The only thing you'll be paying for on a monthly basis is your phone bill, and you're paying that anyway. And it's too difficult to use your phone, so it's kind of being wasted. <laughs> That's a great, uh, great point. So here's another question. Um, how about an older adult with um, low vision and cognitive issues who keeps losing the phone in the house? So I would not recommend um, a phone that is uh, portable <laughs> for that individual. Um, however, we can address those, those needs as well. Um, someone with low vision um, and has some, some cognitive um, difficulties, uh, we would probably set them up with something that has uh, like a call button that will ring very, very loud for an extended period of time until they're able to find that phone. Um, really, the best person to ask that question of, though, would be our evaluators because they have the most up-to-date information on the equipment that we're providing. And I know if we don't have something right then and there, uh, we will find it. We will go to the distributors that are out there and we will say, this is what we need. And I know that that is a common problem where people are losing their phones in the couch cushions or in the garden <laughs> or in the bathroom and they can't find it. Um, and so I know that we would have something uh, that would address that. Wow, that's fantastic. And how about, I know everything is different because of COVID, but if somebody needed help doing an install, um, would there be someone that could help them do that? Absolutely. Um, we address this in, in a couple different ways. If there is a family member that is available to be with that person um, and can relay the information, we can do it that way. We can do it via um, virtual experience if, you know, if they're able to do that. Uh, and we will absolutely come to the houses if needed um, to retirement communities if we're permitted within. Um, there, that's been one of our biggest challenges is that folks that are living in facilities um, and retirement communities were not allowed in. Um, we're not essential <laughs> for that. Um, so we, um, we do the best that we can to get into these places. Um, and we work very closely with family to help them get things set up as well. So that's a good point, Jenny. So this, this could be for someone who lives in a community, not just somebody uh, that's living in their own house. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we have capabilities to work with firewalls as well. Um, a lot of um, uh, places that have senior housing um, are, they have significant firewalls uh, just to keep things secure and internet connections secure. Um, we do have the ability to work with IT um, set up it within that community um, to get them connected. Interesting. Here's another great question. Is there a phone that will automatically hang up after a certain period of time if the person forgets to hang it up? <laughs> That's a great question. And I know from personal experience that that was an issue that I experienced with my grandmother. Um, she would forget to hang up the phone and then it would just beep, 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 and she wouldn't <laughs> hear it. And we would try to reach out to her and we couldn't. Um, so we had to send someone to the house to hang it up. So I know that that is a, a big problem. Um, off the top of my head, I am not sure if that's a device that we have available right now, but it's a great suggestion and something that I'm going to go back to the MAT program about and see if there is something that addresses that. Um, we may not have them necessarily in our evaluation centers, but we can certainly find it that out there in, in the world. Um, I know that there's someone that has addressed it um, somewhere in the world, and that's a great suggestion. So thank you very much. I've learned something as well tonight. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I wonder if any of our viewers have any other questions. Jenny, such great information, and it looks like a vast amount of technology and some really supportive, helpful people that will help people uh, find what they need. Absolutely. There's nothing more frustrating than uh, trying to connect with someone and, uh, or for example, if you're a service provider and you have someone that's calling routinely and they're shouting in the phone to you and they don't hear what you're trying to say, it can be incredibly frustrating. So we're just trying to solve that problem. Um, just that's one, one more problem we can solve. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. 
Um, excellent. I am so happy uh, to have you uh, with us tonight. Uh, folks, we are scheduled. Our next webinar is February 11th. Our topic is navigating senior relationships. Um, we know that as caregivers, um, relationships between you and the person you care for can be challenging. Between you and your spouse, if you're between you and your siblings, there's so many challenges to relationships when someone is caregiving. Um, we're excited to have Pam McDonald, who's a licensed clinical social worker from Frederick, um, with lots of experience to just give us some guidance and some helpful strategies to navigate those relationships, to keep them strong and uh, keep you strong, uh, to keep doing what you are doing. I also want to say that, so that is February 11th. Uh, the registration is open already. Uh, you can register anytime. And please, please help us spread the word um, to get more folks uh, here to our webinars. Uh, we are not bound by uh, geography. So if you have a, a friend or a family member who lives uh, somewhere else, they are welcome uh, from any part of the country or, or nation for that matter, uh, I mean world, um, to check in. Um, I want to say thank you again to Bonnie Elliott from Care Patrol of Central Maryland and Loudoun, Virginia. Here is Bonnie's contact information. Um, again, uh, if you have questions, uh, have a loved one who is in need of um, placement, um, no cost for Bonnie's services, but a, a tremendous amount of uh, good guidance and comfort and care. So uh, give her a call. We will see you back in February and I wish you all well. Please stay safe and uh, be careful. Keep your masks on, keep your distance, wash your hands. Um, it's sure not over yet. So take care everybody, have a great night. Okay, everybody. That was fun.